Uh, yeah, you, you won by no one won against you. Yes, <laughs> last part. Yes. Congratulations. What is it? That's treasure. Second term. Okay. Thank you. I have some guests tonight. We're going to go through all the meeting rules. So we have a timer, and that timer is going to be Diego. Diego, can you give us a breakdown of the timer? Hi everyone, my name is Diego. I'm going to be the timer. I'm going to do the timer responsibility today. And I will be keeping track of everyone who gets onto the lectern. You will have different recommended times of you speaking. So for I think the speech today is between five to seven minutes. Is it am I correct in that? Okay. So five minutes is the green marker, six minutes is the manila marker, and seven minutes is the red marker. And what we recommend when you see, if you for whatever reason see the red marker, you have about 30 seconds to wrap it up. So don't immediately wrap up, but just keep in mind that it's time to start wrapping things up so we can stay track, we can keep in mind with the daily agenda. And with table topics, it's a shorter time period. Green marker is one minute, a manila color is one minute and 30 seconds, and red is two minutes. Thank you, Diego. Great overview of the time. I just noticed that Heather is not here. Justin, can you do an impromptu table topic, Master? Uh, yeah, I, I have a that. sheet with some. Oh, that'd be great. Okay. Yep. Awesome to do that. And with that, can you let everyone know what the table topic master is? Sure. So the table topic master leads a is one of the most interesting parts of the meeting. So a session where we introduce a topic and we have someone from the group come up and uh, speak on that topic for one to two minutes. So it's a good opportunity to learn to think fast on your feet and uh, speak and, uh, without much preparation. As a guest, if you'd like to do it, you're welcome. But we will not make you get up here and do it on your first night. So you can watch a couple of us do it, and then if you feel the, the urge, have a, have a go at it. It's fun. And our Grammarian for tonight is going to be John. John, can you guess? Hello, everybody. My name is John Murphy. I'm the grammarian tonight. And I'll be providing the word of the day and keeping track of everybody's crutch words like um and no and so and things like that. The word that I've come up with is transmography. T R A N S M O G R I F Y. Transmography. It's a verb. To change or alter greatly and often with grotesque or humorous effect. Okay, thank you, John. And also, John has a clicker, so if you would like, like we could do a speech tonight or technical topics, if you'd like him to click during your crutch words, you can have him do that. Just let him know before we start. And we also have evaluators for tonight's meeting. Our general evaluators. Tom, and he's just basically going to give a general overview of how the meeting went, and he's going to introduce our evaluators for the meeting. And our first evaluator is going to be Susan, who's also our secretary for tonight, so she's going to be taking a lot of notes. <laughs> and thank you for doing this last minute. And also, Rosemary is going to be the second evaluator for free speech. <coughs> That covers all the roles for tonight. I will now introduce our first speaker, Mike. And he is speaking from the New Pathways program, which is interesting because I haven't heard a lot of speeches. And it's on researching and presenting. Let's give it a round of applause for Mike. Friends, Romans, countrymen, postmasters, and guests. That is not how speech Mark Antony has in Julius Caesar's Julius C uh, in William Shakespeare's Julius Caesar Begins, but it might as well have been the way my 10th grade speech contest went. Just like many other assignments that I had during that time, and even up until recently, I pretended it did not exist until the night before. And I began studying my speech just like with any other pretty tough assignment. I, put several hours into it, and in the early hours in the morning, I finally found some rest. This assignment was different than others, however. As I waited before my 
my presentation was due to be called upon, uh, my heart started beating out of my chest. My palms started sweating. I started getting really nervous, really anxious. My entire state was transmogrified. And I found it very difficult going up in front of the podium. As you can perhaps imagine, I, I was hoping that during that speech, I was Julius Caesar who was to be buried as opposed to me standing in front of the podium. It was a very tough speech, it wasn't well received, and it made me look to try to get better at public speaking, one of the reasons why I came here. Now my procedure in studying and preparation for, for this speech was certainly not perfect by any means, but I would like to talk about one smaller component of my speech, my preparation, that's easily overlooked, and that's overlooked in many parts of life, and that's sleep. Sleep is considered the third pillar of your health, uh, along with diet and exercise, and it has a strong impact on your mental and your physical state. According to, according to Current Biology, a science journal, um, uh, sleep, uh, we process m much complex information during, during our sleep. We form old memories and, and we collect new memories and consolidate all this information and it really helps us going into our next day. And without a good night's rest, we really handicap our responsibilities for all, what we do in the next day to come. And that's without even saying anything about our physical state. According to Huffington Post, a lot of very common health conditions are a lot of common health conditions come up due to a lack of sleep, and these include uh, diabetes, high blood pressure, anxiety, stress, cancer, almost anything that you can possibly imagine physically going wrong can happen due to a lack of sleep. And so, what can we do about it? First, of course, there's the basic recommendations that we oftentimes get. That's having a consistent schedule, going to bed at a uh, very even time, cutting the caffeine a little bit, diet and exercise. I'd like to talk about one component of sleep deprivation that I face, that I feel like a lot of us face uh, during our technological age, and that's screen time. According to the Mayo Clinic, in conducting a study in 2013, the more screen time that we have, especially before bed, decreases the melatonin going to our eyeballs and our, and our cells behind our eyes. And that completely messes up our sleep cycle. Dr. Russell Johnson even goes as far as, as to say that phones are specifically designed to keep us from sleeping. And that's a very difficult thing for someone, especially a millennial of my generation, because the same study shows that 60% of millennials go to sleep with their phone within arm's reach. And it's an easy thing to do to wind down checking your news feed or any type of uh, social media right before you go to sleep. And given that uh, we do have such a technological dependence as, as we're gro growing into this new generation, but I urge you, I urge you all, Toastmasters and guests, to, uh, to pay mind to what our uh, biological humanity demands of us. That's a good night's sleep. So I urge everyone to cut the caffeine, to have a, a consistent sleep schedule, to put the phone away, and it won't be long until you reap, reap the rewards. It may not be everything you need to pass a 10th uh, grade speech contest, but it certainly will help. Thank you. Mike for that great speech and I think it's a good reminder for all of us here as we always try to push the limits and do more in the day. It's a growing problem I think a lot of people. And yeah, I've definitely made myself sick in some periods of my life by not getting enough sleep and your immune system is beat up and yeah, it's just not good at so thank you for that speech. Mike. Our next speaker for tonight is going to be Maurice Heidelberg. So this is your this is an icebreaker from Pathways. For, for Pathways. Okay. This is going to be Maurice Adelberg's icebreaker for Pathways. So let's welcome Maurice.
fellow Toastmasters and honored guests. Tonight, I will tell you a little bit about myself. Even though I did an icebreaker during my initial signing up for Toastmasters, this is for Pathways. I came up as a military brat. Though my parents, both my parents, are Mississippians, me and my sister were born in Delaware. That was my father's first duty station in the Air Force. And we lived in different states throughout my childhood and my schooling. Well, almost all my schooling, not my whole schooling. I ended up going to seven schools in four different states. And I went through what is called a painful process for most children of gaining friends in one place and then my father being reassigned to another place and I had to leave and make new friends at a, at a new place. And I've done that three or four, about four times. When my father retired, my sister had graduated from high school already. So she was done with school before my father retired from the Air Force. But I still had three years of school left. So I ended up doing three years of school in my parents' native Mississippi. And the funny thing about it, looking back, I mean, it wasn't funny back then to me, but I was the kid who talked funny because even though my parents are Mississippians, I've gained my accent or the way I talked by living in the Northeast and part of the Midwest. So that was kind of traumatic to me as a, as a teenager. And, and plus, uh, the fact that I had to find new friends again. The next thing, after I graduated from high school, I joined the Army myself. And members of my family, or a member of my family, was not thrilled when they found out that I had joined the military. I called myself doing it for a purpose because I did the two-year enlistment for the college fund. But still, the, my family, member of my family was not happy with that. But I found that it was a great experience for me because I, I went to Germany, which is somewhere outside the United States. And that was the first time that, I, well, it wasn't the first time I left the United States, but it was the first time I left the Western Hemisphere, I'll say it that way. And I learned a little bit about a different culture. I learned the language a little bit, but I was only there for a year and a half. And plus, I didn't have too many native friends, so I didn't have the opportunity to learn too much of the language. After that, my time in the Army, I came back to the United States and started going to college. I went to a community college in Meridian, which is cheaper than a four-year college, but at least you can get your first two years knocked out so you can go to your four-year college. In my college education, during my freshman year or my sophomore year, I was unsure what my major was going to be. I was actually undecided between three majors. Some type of engineering, architecture, and computer science. Around the first semester, or just after the first semester of my sophomore year, I finally made a decision of which major I was going to pursue, and that was mechanical engineering. So I completed the two years, the first two years of college at the community college, and then I went to a four-year university to finish the rest of my college education. 
And in the midst of that college education, I did get engineering experience for be, by being a co-op student. And I did that for three semesters, which totals up one year. And after I graduated from college, I got my first job as an engineer, well, my second job, if you include the co-op, at the Stennis Space Center in Mississippi. And then after my job at the Stennis Space Center, I worked at two engineering firms in New Orleans. And when I got laid off from that last job in New Orleans, I ended up coming back home to Meridian for about nine and a half years. I thought I was going to get another engineering job and then leave, which I, you know, I, I was anxious to do, but it, that didn't happen, so I hit a snag. But finally, I did land a job in Mobile as an engineer after that nine and a half years in my hometown. And even though I learned quite a bit from that job, I count that as the most stressful job in my career. I, it was a hostile, in my opinion, a hostile work environment. And I had never quit a job before, aside from not re-enlisting in the military. So it was a different experience for me to quit the job, but I know it was best for me because I went through a lot of stress in that job. So in fall of 2014, I opened up my own business, a mechanical engineering business. And even though I did get some work, it's, it's hard when you're a self-employed engineer. And in the midst of that, I met another engineer, engineering firm which is made up of self-employed engineers, and that's what I'm working with now. And I find that to be a great experience because now you learn different things about business from the members of that firm. With that, my life was full of transmography, <laughs> if I use that term correctly. <laughs> With that, I conclude the speech. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Maurice. So I joined a little later, so I never got to hear Maurice's icebreaker, so it's nice. You know, it's been a year and a half to hear Maurice's icebreaker. So thank you, Maurice, for that. At this time, I will now introduce our table topic master for tonight, and that is going to be Justin. Thank you. Good evening, everybody, guests. We see all of you. Sorry, it's been a while since I've been around. It's good to be back. So I'll start by the first topic here. Well, first of all, let's have a volunteer. I'll pick a volunteer before I throw a topic out. Diego? Yeah. All right, Diego. Uh, can you tell me, please? If life is so short, why do so many things we don't like and like, excuse me, if life is so short, why do we do so many things we don't like and like so many things we don't do? That's a very good question. Thank you, Justin. Honored guests and fellow Toastmasters, the table topic question I was presented with was, if life is so short, why do we spend so much of our time doing the things we don't like? And why do we spend so little time doing things we really do enjoy? As someone who was trained in undergrad as an economist, I think ultimately the answer to that question comes down to the fact that we need to put food on the table. Because when we have food on the table, we're able to have more energy and live a very long life. And hopefully on the weekends, we have an opportunity to, to do things that we really care about. In order to get that food on the table, usually we have to do things that people don't really enjoy doing. Because 
When we do things that people don't usually like to enjoy doing, we're given compensation. And in that form, it's usually money. And when we have that money, then we're able to get food that lets us live a very long and healthy life. So ultimately, I think the, the bottom line of this question is a simple economics question. It's all about getting food on the table. And usually, in order to get food on the table, we're doing things that we don't necessarily like to do. And that makes us really enjoy the weekends, I think, a lot more when we, when we have so little time to enjoy doing things we really like. But that's it. That's the answer to the question I have. <laughs> Thanks, Jesse. Thank you. Okay. I'm sure we all know a little about having to spend some time doing things that we don't necessarily love. Can I have another volunteer? Lawrence. Lawrence, what do you have that you cannot live without? What do I have what? What do you have that you cannot live without? Fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, I've been asked in a roundabout way, what is the most precious thing in my life? What is it that I absolutely cannot live without? Well, the truth is, there are a lot of things that I can't live without. I can't live without oxygen. I can't live without water. I can't live without food. But I think that they really want to know is what things that you have that you don't really need to have, that there's no reason for you to really want, but you still want to have. And the truth is, I don't think there is anything like that in my life. When I was younger, my desire when I was nine, ten years old was to be a hobo. <laughs> Because hobos had a point of view that whatever you own, owns you. So, I don't have anything that I cannot live without except for life itself. Mr. Thompson. Thank you. I agree with you on, on some aspects of the things point of view, especially every time I need to do something in my house or something breaks. It's just stuff. It's just, it takes a lot of energy to keep up. May I have another volunteer? You go. Okay. Great. Where would you most like to go and why? Justin asked, where would I most want to go and why? It's really hard because, as many of you know, I've been out and about a lot lately the past year, so I feel like I've really been going to so many places and seeing so many things and meeting so many different people and learning bits of languages and all these different countries just enough to get me around and the craziest thing at the end of May actually in April and May when I was traveling the place I actually wanted to be the most was at home I was really tired of living out of one little backpack wearing the same clothes all the time sleeping in hostels I just wanted my own bed. I didn't want to have to talk to people every time someone came into the hostel with a room of eight to 10 people. I had my own bathroom and I could cook my own meals without having to share pots and pans. It sounds a little selfish, but I wanted my own pots and pans in my own kitchen, in my own bathroom, everything to myself. And that's lately where I've been that's what I've been wanting most, is just to feel settled and at home. So, that's, that's so plenty of time to go into a couple mm -hmm. more. Okay. I have another volunteer. I'll go. Okay, all right. 
If you could ask one person alive or dead only one question, who would you ask and what would you ask? I could ask any one question to one person. It's kind of a tough one for me. So I, I guess I would sit down with someone Well, let's, I'll just take this one because I read about this recently. So I read that Warren Buffett got paid $50 million to have lunch with somebody. So if I could get that at a cheap discount of free <laughs> and, and ask him what did he do in his life that got him to where he is, I think that would be a good bargain for an expensive question. So if I had that opportunity, I would ask Warren Buffett that question. Thank you. I just saw a great uh, documentary about Warren Buffett, a biography on Netflix. So that was really, he's an interesting character. And when we, what's our agenda for concluding this part of the meeting? Uh, 719. 719. Okay, so we have another few minutes here. Do I have another volunteer? Maybe someone who hasn't been up before would like to give it a shot. Okay, I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm juggling a whole lot of balls. Okay, great. <laughs> Susan, what's your most beloved childhood memory? Toastmasters, honored guests, my most beloved childhood memory. There have been, I really had a great childhood. Um, I had loving grandparents that really made a great home for my mom and I when my mom and dad were divorced. I was very, very young. But they always allowed me to come, when, once I started school, they always allowed me to come, or wanted me to come, and stay the summers with them. So probably I would say summers with my grandparents, because they had, they just made me feel settled, and they had a lot of love, and unconditional love, it seemed, for me. It was just a, a really nice way to get away from we lived in a city, and they typically lived more in rural areas or in smaller towns because my grandfather traveled <clears throat> for his job in construction. So I believe that's probably my most beloved childhood memory, the summer times. If you could live the next 24 hours and then erase it and start over just once, what would you do? <laughs> Mr. Topic Master, fellow Toastmasters, honored guest. The question posed to me was if I could spend the next 24 hours doing something and erase it after it's done. Well, I don't have the one and a half minutes to think about it, so I'll just say this. <laughs> and this is just hypothetical. Some of the people that I've hated or, did, or disliked during my life, I just like to go up to them and slap them hard in the face. <laughs> and, you know, he's find as many as I can during the 24 hour period. <laughs> Hello, how are you doing? Kick them. <laughs> take the gavel, <laughs> beat him on the head with it, and then when the 24 hours is over, it's all erased. Thanks Justin, great table topic. And I hope no one is watching the video <laughs> <laughs> that did something to
the yeah. past, and they might avoid it. I think the 30 time. minutes had expired, but I came back. I don't know how much of it I got. I'll find out tonight. I might watch out for you for the next yeah. 24 hours. Yeah. Okay, now it's time for evaluations, and I'll introduce Tom Hageman as our general evaluator for tonight. We had two speeches this evening, one by Mike and one by Maurice, and the evaluation for Mike's speech this evening, the evaluator is Susan. Susan, would you please come up and give your evaluation for me? Thank you. Toastmasters and our guests. Tonight, I'm going to be evaluating Mike's speech and on sleep. Actually, it was a researching a topic, and I thought he did a very fine job talking about his research. He used Current Biology, Huffington Post, Mayo Clinic, and maybe others that I might have missed. So I think um, he did a great job of backing up his research with statistics. Um, the speaker's topic, I think, applied to all of us because the way you started out was talking about your was a 10th grade speech presentation that you had to give. So I think we could all relate to that and the nerves and, and all of that. So I think that was a great way to start that out. Um, you supported your, your main points um, with, with this research, I think. You gave a little bit of, um, of the information from each, each uh, source. So I think they were well supported. Uh, you the very the types of support material were varied. You had a, a science journal, you had Huffington Post. Think what you will or not about that. Mayo Clinic, and um, then you talked about being a millennial. So I think maybe some of us I can't relate, but some can in this in this room tonight. Uh, the, the purpose, I think, was clear. I'm just reading this for the first time, you guys, so. <laughs> the purpose was clear. It was talking about the dangers of not getting enough sleep. And as somebody who has had that problem probably since our first child was born, I can, I can attest that that's very important, that you need a good night's sleep. Uh, the speech seemed pretty effectively organized. You, you talked about cutting caffeine, exercise, regulating your sleep time, and not using your devices, electronic devices before bedtime. So I think that was, to me, that was a nice way to, to point out the, the possible pitfalls of not getting enough sleep. You always, whenever I see you do a speech, you always use your body language, and you, you have a nice smile on your face and you seem very animated, I think that you do well in that, in that regard. Things you have, could have done differently to improve the speech. I, I think just, we all do this, we get kind of got a little bit bogged down in the beginning, but maybe with, when you were trying to remember some of your sources or something that you know, happens to everybody. And I, I like what I liked about the speech that it, it was a great topic. I think it was a, a good topic because so many of us use, we all have devices that we use and we probably all use them at night before we go to bed. So maybe that's a good word to the wise for all of us not to use our devices before we go to bed. So we'll get a better night's sleep. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. And our second speech this evening was by Maurice, and Maurice's evaluation will be given by Rosemary. Maurice did his icebreaker for the Pathways Path. <laughs> and just to go over your speech, Maurice loved learning about you, your journey from when you were a kid, you know, to present day and, you know, what made you become the person you are today. So it was really, it was nice hearing your story. Uh, let's see, going through the different criteria of clarity, 
I thought you had great volume. You speak very clearly. Don't ever hear you mumbling or stumbling or you're just your voice is clear and your words are precise. Uh, your vocal variety. I think you could improve a little bit on this just to if you want to show maybe some enthusiasm. You know, you're talking about yourself, you're telling what you've gone through. The hard times we could tell when, okay, those weren't the most enjoyable moments of your life. And that was easy to tell. But maybe the more happy or the more enthusiastic parts of your life, maybe you show that a little bit more as well. Eye contact, you have great eye contact. You looked at everybody in the room. The only time you really weren't was when you were thinking. And that just disengaged you from the audience a little bit. Gestures, very natural. At first, you were a little stiff at the very beginning. Uh, I guess you were kind of opening your whole history to the room. I would be a little too. And, but as the, your speech went along, it was just very natural. It's like I was just talking to you after the meeting. Audience awareness, same thing that I spoke about earlier, just whenever you do pause or you are in thought, you disengage from the room a bit. Comfort level, very comfortable. Again, at the beginning, you're a little rigid and then after 30 seconds you're completely fine and seem very natural and as for interest again that would be just it seemed sometimes that you weren't as interested about what you were actually talking about and if there was a little bit more interest in what you were speaking about I think that would engage the audience a little bit more as well and see the things you excelled at. You have a good use of space. Your voice very clear and also very genuine. Like just doesn't seem to have any walls or any insincerity at all when you speak. And things you may want to work on. Uh, Pauses, that your use of pauses mid-sentence or mid-thought seems to to break it up and it can be, it's not as, the cuts the flow a bit. And whereas, want to treat it, I'm doing it right now, treat it a little bit more conversational. I think because you excelled at being genuine and you, I uh, really enjoyed your speech and loved hearing about you. So that concludes Marisa's evaluation. Diego, could you please give us the time? Thank you. Absolutely. So we had two speeches, prepared speeches today. Mike spoke for five minutes, right on the green mark. Maurice Heidelberg spoke for 7 minutes and 58 seconds. Then we had a total of six table topic speakers. Diego spoke for a minute and 22 seconds. Lawrence spoke for a minute and 31 seconds. Rosemary spoke for a minute and 23 seconds. Cody spoke for 57 seconds. Susan Murphy spoke for a minute and 15 seconds and Maurice spoke for 56 seconds. And then finally, we have three evaluations going on. So Susan's evaluation lasted for a total of three minutes and 15 seconds, and Rosemary's evaluation lasted for a total amount of three minutes and 52 seconds. Back to you, Tom. Thank you. John, do you have a grammarian's report? Yes, sir, thank you. It wasn't too bad tonight, but all, all I'll do is just go through the events as they occurred and kind of gave the report that way. Mike, starting out, you used uh, eight times, um, once, but you did use the word of the day, so that might just like clean. <laughs> Maurice, you had one, you know, just a real tight, you know, but, it was, but you also got the word of the day. During table topics, Diego, you were good. 
Lawrence, you were good. Rosemary, you had one drawn out and Cody, you had three so's. Susan, you had one um and one so. Maurice, you were good. During the evaluation, Susan, you had three uhs, six ums, and three so's. Rosemary, the drawn out and you had ten of those and three uhs. And that's it. Diego, you were good. Sorry. Thank you, John. Yes, okay, so I'll go ahead and do the general evaluation part of the meeting, of the meeting itself. I always enjoy coming over here to these meetings. I, this club is really, does excellent in everything that it does. Cody has Toastmaster this evening. I don't know whether you guys picked up on something, but when he was filling the roles and he asked Justin, if he could be table topics, Cody had a list, he said, of table topics to use, which is a clue for uh, Toastmasters. If you're a Toastmaster for the evening, you have to prepare, be fully prepared in case something doesn't go right. You, you have, you can, you've got something to back it up with. And I don't know if you do that just as a general rule or if you did it specifically for this meeting, but the idea is be fully prepared for all facets of the meeting so that everything comes off without a hitch. So with that, it was excellent. I thought your introductions were good. I thought your transitions were good. Going from one speaker to the next, one topic to the next, going from speeches to table topics and so on. So that was very, very well done. Um, there I go with one. The speeches themselves were both excellent. The evaluations, I think, were spot on, especially for you because you didn't have the, the evaluation to work from until the last minute, apparently. I didn't even see that you had gotten it at all. All I heard him say was he didn't have it. And then they were fumbling around with the computer trying to see if you could pull it up. That was very, very well done. And I liked what you did too also with offering the, you had a good point, a suggestion, good point, which is the classic way to do an evaluation. So that, I thought that was very well done. And had some very good points to it. Table topics. Were those yours or were they from the list that he gave you? They were from the list. Okay. Much easier. But the way you presented it seemed like it was yours. So that's I was very impressed by that. And I thought all the speakers for the table topics were excellent. Between you and Lawrence, I don't know where you guys come up with some of the stuff sometimes that <laughs> you come up with, but it's, I'm very, very impressed with it. And uh, I thought that session went very good. Grammarian, or rather the word of the day, I've heard of thermography topography, geography, but I've never heard of transmography. So thank you, I have a new word today. I have no idea what to do with. <laughs> I'll think of something. So with that, I'll turn the meeting back over. Appreciate the Tom Great synopsis of the meeting. I agree with all those points as well. I don't have a formal educational overview, so if somebody had something they would like to, you have something more so you want to? I always have something if nobody else okay. does. All right, Lawrence. A couple of very interesting points that were brought up in our evaluation that actually are presented in the new Pathways program. One of which is evaluations and being prepared for evaluations. In the Pathways program, you can go in without any previous notice and pull up any of the evaluations for every project in the entire Pathways program. You don't have to wait till you get there, you can just go pull it up. So I would highly recommend that if anyone is going to be in the position of a evaluator, that you get the opportunity, you can go in and look at those evaluation forms. Now another very good thing that the Pathways program has, it has like pages and pages of educational information and videos. I mean, hundreds of them in multiple languages. But pretty much anything that you have to do in Pathways, there is a video or an educational program on it. So 
If you want to learn to be a little bit better evaluator, go into Pathways. Look in the educational programs, find the video, launch it, watch it, study it as you see fit, and then when you go and look at an evaluation form, it's going to make a lot more sense. Now there was a second thing that somehow just flew out of my mind that you brought up in the, uh, in the program other than evaluation, was preparation. Preparation for any position in a Toastmasters meeting. These are very important. And again, Pathways have set up to prepare us for those positions. Again, there's educational format there for you to look at any of those positions. What are you supposed to do as the Toastmaster? What is a good way to be a Topic Master? Even though those are not given credit like they were in the Competent Leader Program, they are still part of Toastmasters, still something that we do every meeting, Everybody worldwide does those things in every meeting, so they are still part of the Toastmasters path, even though they're not specifically mentioned. They are part of what we do. So there is educational programs there. Um, hopefully, we can all take advantage of those. The second thing I want to bring or actually I guess it's now the third thing that I want to bring up is Easy Speak. I am very grateful that many, many people got on and acknowledged that they were coming to the meeting today in Easy Speak. I really love it. You guys are getting on the ball with that. But I would also like you to look ahead and pick out what you want to do next meeting, the meeting afterwards, and whatever, because if you don't, I will randomly pick those people who I think should be in such a position. And there's a nice little button at the bottom of uh, Easy Speak for the Vice President of Education to push that button and it automatically fills all of the spots. So when, in just a few minutes, they ask me to, what's on the agenda next week? Surprise! <laughs> Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Lawrence. Yes, we all need a reminder to get on your speed. Sometimes I forget myself. With that, would anyone like to go ahead and let Lawrence know what roles you would want to do. Can you do a speech? So, uh, What's that? Mary wants to do a speech. Oh, you're going to do a speech. Okay, I might have to take you away from something else. That's good. You <laughs> love it. Okay, um, I'm going to have to, uh, what speech are you planning on doing? Do you know? This project to organize your speech. Okay, um, could you do me a favor? I can do it, but I would like you to do it, if you could, tonight or tomorrow, mm -hmm. go in and request a speech through Easy Speak. And then I, I can just get you in there right away. I will not be here next week. You will not be here next week. Okay, we will put you as not being here next week. Not an issue. Okay, anybody else have a, uh, something they would enjoy doing next week? Well, here comes the surprise. <laughs> okay, I have uh, the general evaluator. How about Diego? I can do that for you. Good. <laughs> uh, first evaluator, Cody. Okay. Second evaluator, Mr. Jester, we'll find out. Ah, uh, counter, <laughs> Susan? Okay. Okay. Uh, how about the grammarian? Will not be Rosemary because she's doing uh, doing something else. Is there anyone who would like to be a grammarian? I can. Go ahead. Well, doesn't awe and grammarian kind of? I want to switch them. Split them. 
I want to let, um, okay, let me go into this. <laughs> what I would like to do, I would like to split the grammarian and the ah counter because I want the ah counter to be able to signal people when they use filler words if they are willing to be signaled. You don't have to do it, but it is a really, I'll tell you, when I first joined Toastmasters, way back in the last century, they did that. We had a big co steel coffee can, and you would bring in a, a roll of, I think it was dimes. And every time that you did a filler word, they would throw a dime into this can, it would shling, 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 shling. And that was our coffee money. Sometimes we didn't have much coffee. But anyways, <laughs> the point was it was really uncomfortable in the very beginning because you would stop and, and you'd lose track of where you were in your speech. But very quickly you got used to it and then you would, you would realize you're about to say a filler word before you said it. And then that made it so you would stop. Now, I have noticed that since we haven't been doing that, I've started using more filler words. So I want to get back to doing that. And I actually bought a clicker so that we can do that. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to use that. So that's why I wanted to separate them. So that person can focus 100% on enjoying the speech, but at the same time being able to catch those keywords. Okay? So that's why I want to separate that. Now, who, is it, who said they wanted to be a grammarian? I, I can do it. You want to do that? Okay. We'll have you do the uh, grammarian and the uh, table topics. Is there someone who would... Oh, I thought I put myself in the table topics, but that's okay. Um, does anybody want to be table topics or else I will be that? I can do that. You'll do that? Okay. Um, we'll let we'll let you be on the table topics and then um, that leaves the time I had to actually as timer so now the timer is going to be replaced in the uh, Toastmaster who wants to be timer or Toastmaster I'll take Toastmaster uh, Justin okay didn't I have you on something else no I did not yeah I had you table topics right didn't you just say you were going to be no, table topics? No, no, John does me. John. Oh, okay. Different okay. Jane. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah. All right. So you want to be. Toastmaster. Huh? Toastmaster. Okay. We'll get you there. All right. Yes, okay. I did. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. All right. That is our agenda for the next meeting. Right. And who's the timer? And who's the timer? No. I can be the timer if nobody else wants to be. That's not an issue. Thank you, Lawrence, for doing the roles for next meeting. There's no awards tonight, so I will now adjourn the meeting. Thank you, everyone.